thanks for joining me for this tactical fly fisher fly tying tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be tying a magneto stonefly which is a nymph pattern that's been really successful for me both for steelhead and for plenty of other species in the river. I've caught everything from smallmouth bass to bull trout and whitefish and rainbows and anything in between on this. Uh, it's certainly a really effective pattern and you can vary the colors and the size to both imitate stoneflies but also be a, a nice attractor fly for any of the conditions you might run up against. Alright, so I'm starting with a long shank streamer hook. This happens to be a size 8 Hannock uh, 970 and a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead. You could also do 3.3 millimeter on this if you need something a little bit lighter for shallower water. I'm going to go ahead and cover uh, about three quarters of the shank in some 20 thousandths lead wire. Uh, you could also use 25 thousandths if you need it to be a little bit heavier. Once I get to the second half of this, I'm going to take some brushable zappa gap and just cover the last few wraps with some super glue. And that'll make sure that the body stays in place and doesn't roll around once you're fishing this fly. Uh, I, on, on the first few that I tied without super glue, it had a tendency to roll and all of a sudden the shell back and the rubber legs would end up facing <laughs> vertically instead of horizontally across the fly. And that's certainly not preferable. I'm also making sure that the slot on this bead is facing up and <clears throat> that'll keep the bead in line on the hook. Okay, so I've got some 14 knot black Vivas thread. And then I've got a black LifeFlex rubber leg here. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over into a loop and then just take and align the tips on the back here for my tail and make sure you do a pinch wrap here <clears throat> which basically means that you take the thread put it in between your index th uh, finger and your thumb come around the hook without tightening and face the thread up and then you pull up instead of down <clears throat> and that will lock those rubber legs right in place okay Next I have some brassy sized silver wire. You want it to be bigger so that uh, you don't have teeth chew through it from the fish. And actually first I'll go ahead and just cut the tails off here. A lot of people would want to tie these really long so they wiggle a lot and certainly from an action perspective you'll get more movement if they're longer. But I like to cut them a bit short simply because if you, if you trim them long, they can have a tendency to foul around the back of the hook and that tends to make me really mad. So I, I cut them a little bit short to make sure they don't foul. So then I'll go ahead and tie in my wire. And then I've got some black fino skin. And I would also take the same uh, old scissors that you use to, to cut off your wire and cut that fino skin with because the paper backing on it can be kind of rough on scissors. And just go ahead and cut the tip with a little bit of a bevel on both sides so that you end up with that sort of shape. And then I'm going to tie this in with, uh, there's usually a glossy and a matte side of this and I'm going to tie it in with the matte side facing up and that way when I pull it over the glossy side will be what is showing on the fly. And then I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of fold that fino skin up and make sure that I'm back to where I've the exact point where I've tied in the rubber legs and wire but no further and that way the rubber legs won't get moved by that fino skin. Okay so for our abdomen we have some purple micro peller chenille. I'm going to go ahead and 
advance the thread about two thirds of the way forward. You can put a, a half hitch or just a couple of turn whip finish in it there. If you have a rotary vise anyway, and put your uh, thread on the bobbin cradle. Go ahead and spin your abdomen up and make sure those turns are touching. That way you don't have any lead wire showing through. Pull your fino skin over and lock it down with a few turns. Now when you wrap this wire, the first thing you want to do is make sure you get the wire up on to the back of that fino skin at least you know an eighth of an inch or so. If you don't and it wraps towards the back, it's going to make those rubber legs twirl around the fly. So you want to make sure it bites into the shell back itself and not into the rubber legs. Second, when you wrap around, don't apply tension the whole uh, revolution all the way around. You want to lightly wrap it around till about the bottom or facing back towards you. Put your fingers on top of the shell back and then apply pressure. That'll keep the shell back from rotating over and it'll uh, keep it on top of the fly. So waggle it through the fibers. If you don't waggle it through the fibers, you can tend to get some polar chenille fibers trapped on the near side of the hook. Go ahead and wrap it around again, then apply your tension while you're holding on to the back. And it looks like I'm going to do four turns on this particular fly, which is a nice even spacing. I just always like to break my wire off instead of getting my scissors up there. Go ahead and pull your fino skin back and wrap that down. Take your rubber leg again. And then use your left thumb to hold it and pin it in place. And you can kind of do one light, two light wraps and then lock it in place once again. And that way you don't roll it. And then I like to leave just a wrap or two of thread uh, behind the bead for my tie-in point. That way, as I whip finish and, and put the rest of my material on, I still have room to let that rubber leg go forward so it doesn't get cocked back by the bead later on in the fly. And it looks like I've used up most of that rubber leg, so I'm gonna go ahead and get another one here. And this time, I'll use my index finger on the far side of the fly and go ahead and do a pinch wrap with my thumb and index and then lock it in place. Okay, last thing to add is some black polar chenille and that gives us a nice two-toned effect with some a purple abdomen and a, a black thorax. And I'll go ahead and do a couple of turn whip finish again so I can wrap this with the rotary function. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a bump back here where you've tied in that or folded back the fino skin. You're going to have to make a wrap or two there and then a, a bunch more in front to try and even out that taper. And then when you make your final wrap, go ahead and rotate the black polar chenille on top. And that way when you tie it in, it's not gonna affect that rubber leg that's on the near side. Pull your fino skin over.
And then also at the end, I wanna make sure that I pull it back, and that way it really locks it in, especially if you're trying to do this with scud back, which is an alternative. Uh, if you don't fold it back, that, that stretchiness of the scud back will sometimes pull that shell back right back through your thread and your fly unravels. So you wanna make sure with any fly, whenever you're doing a shell back like this, it's always a good idea to go ahead and fold it back and just do a couple of turns on top of it to lock it right in place. It does make it a little bulkier, so you gotta leave some room for it, but in the end, it's a more durable fly. Okay, so I'm locking it in place with a couple of whip finishes. Then I'm gonna go in and trim it off. And then lastly, just take your super glue again, and I'll go ahead and just put super glue right on the thread there. And then that forms your whip finish, or that forms your head cement that you can then whip finish over the top of. And now that fly is not gonna come apart. You're gonna lose it before it comes apart. So the legs look just a little bit long to me. There again, I don't want those rear legs long enough that they'll foul around the hook. You may try them a little longer yourself to begin with and see if you can get away with it. Certainly longer will wiggle more. And it looks like I'm about even now. And there you have it. That is the Magneto Stone. A great fly for steelhead and anything else you come across. If you liked what you saw here on this fly tying tutorial, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like and share. And also we have all the materials for this fly for sale at www.tacticalflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching.